NASDA system was developed to protect us. It was to be the ultimate nuclear deterrent. As it turned out, it was our executioner. Report said that NASDA developed a fault during a routine systems check. Don't believe it. Someone wanted it to take us out. Those nukes were targeted on every major city around the world. NASDA was programmed to start the collapse. When the counter-strikes launched, its laser defenses and anti-missile ground sites failed. The world as we knew it, ended. The nuclear winter hit hard. Disease and famine claimed most of us would survive the nuclear strikes. Wars over cans of dog food took even more. We'd fled Seattle early in 86. We'd heard that the Rocky Mountains were relatively rad-free. After fighting off bands of marauders, we came across the base. Its personnel were dead, killed by any one of a number of virulent diseases. We cracked the doors and cleared out the bodies inside. We knew that things would never be the same again. But we were determined to build a new world out of the ruins. We rebuilt the landing pads and brought the old systems back online. We were finally ready to begin the project. Good day to you all. I am the Mouse Master. I bring to you now the start of a video game series. I have never recorded a YouTube series or video before, but everyone must start somewhere. I do not know what I will do long term. Will I make videos a long term habit of mine? What games will I do? What vocal styles will I be using? I will be treating this as a learning experience as much as anything. And my goals are not to make a living out of this. Sure, life will be grand if this leads to 20 million subscribers, shoe deals, invitations to major broadcasting companies, but that is not the goal. The only things I do know is that I am doing this because I want to, I'm going to choose to do it the way I want to, and that I will be starting with this game, Warzone 2100. So, what is Warzone 2100, and why am I doing a series on it? First, a history lesson. Warzone 2100 came out at the turn of the millennium. While real-time strategies were not a new thing by then, it was still coming into its own as a mainstream genre. The two major players were Westwood Studios and their Command & Conquer series, and Blizzard with its entries of Warcraft and Starcraft. Westwood was known for its storytelling, the more serious mainstream Command & Conquers, and the off-the-wall wackiness of their Red Alert entries, both done with full real-life acting in its cutscenes, and Blizzard was known for making games that largely didn't redefine genres, but were, at least at the time, being the most smooth, polished, and presentable titles to come out of any game studio. If you were going to make a real-time strategy, you were going to have to do something completely different to these two behemoths, as they were really good at what they did. The developer, Pumpkin Studios, tried to do something original. Sadly, they were shut down as a company shortly after this game was released. The staff was rotated to a new studio, but then that one was dismantled in 2008. However, Pumpkin flung a light into the future and released the source code to the public under the GPL. There were a few years where the legal status of the in-game videos was questioned, but as of now, all of the original is available in public domain and currently maintained by a small group of fans called the Warzone Resurrection Project. Link to them in the description below. So what did developer Pumpkin Studios do differently? I'm glad I asked. Warzone 2100 was one of the first RTS games to go into 3D and not just its graphics, but its physics engine as well. In many games before it, you might be able to hide behind something solid, but if you could be seen, you could be hit by just about anything. In Warzone, if there's a wall between you and someone, that wall would have to be shot down before you could hit what was behind it. And if there was a mountain range between you and your targets, you were going to need a way to either fire over or fly over it to attack them. And the concept of firing over is the second thing Pumpkin did differently. They made artillery, well, actual artillery. While many games had some form of this, like Command & Conquer's Artillery or StarCraft Siege Tank, they only fired marginally farther than a direct fire unit. In this game, the smallest, lightest form of artillery is already going to roughly double the range of any direct attack unit, and by the end of the game you will have true artillery able to clear most of the combat map with ease. If you're wondering how Pumpkin managed to balance that, you'll get to see in this series. Next up in this difference list is this game's units. 
In a method rarely seen even today, you do not have a pre-programmed unit list to choose from, which are opened by building tech labs. Instead, every body, propulsion, and weapon used in this game must be retrieved from the wreck of the old world, and then you, the player, put them together in a way that best suits the style you want to use it for. Or put another way, they tied the units you'll be using directly into the storyline and let the player actually choose how to use the technology. If that sounds like a lot of work for something you'll just be spamming out to overrun an enemy base in a single stage, then, well, we get to the parts of why I like this game so much, and despite not being a big fan of the RTS genre, I have this game on my top five favorite games of all time. Your units, your funds, and indeed your main base itself are all persistent throughout the stages. While some stages will involve building a temporary forward base that you will abandon after the objective is complete, the main crux of the game is you continuing to expand your base and army in your efforts to survive and rebuild a devastated world. I do appreciate that the game's story isn't told just in a set of disjointed set pieces. And I enjoy that this game takes my biggest dislike of the RTS genre and almost makes it entirely optional, micromanagement. Don't misunderstand, anyone who plays games of StarCraft at a professional level, I have respect for your micro skills, but I do not like doing it myself. When I play a strategy game, I want to be the general, not a private or sergeant. When I want to do that, I play an FPS instead. Warzone 2100 has, as part of its unit control scheme, ways to automate the types of actions that normally are dictated by micro. Things like unit targeting can be queued up, orders to retrieve damaged units can be given as a conditional. Indeed, telling tanks to retreat, repair, and then come back to the front line can all be automated, leaving the player to command at higher level orders. Granted, you don't have to use these commands. If you like micro, by all means micro. But they are there, and I love them. Also, your units gain experience as they eliminate targets and that skill is carried with the soldier. If you develop a brand new type of tank, you can take your existing armies, recycle their old tanks, and the next batch of tanks that roll off the assembly line will be assumed to be driven by the drivers of the recycled tanks. You'll see as I play the game. I like this game so much that a decade ago, I was writing a strategy guide for it on the Resurrection website, until different events happened over the course of a year that caused me to lose all my saved games and work. Thankfully, I had posted most of it to the Warzone forums, where another user by the name of Krokuda took it upon himself to finish the deed, and props to him. But this does mean that I had started something a decade ago, got five-sixths of the way through, and then never finished. I am here now, finishing at 40 what I started when I was 30. I bring you version 341 of Warzone 2100. One more thing before I begin. I should mention that other locations, including Steam, have released copies of Warzone 2100. The thing with porting 20-year-old games is that, usually, the game has long passed its development cycle, but Warzone continues to this day to be updated, and the assorted ports were not done by the Resurrection Project, so the game's continuing updates are not guaranteed to propagate. If you'd like to know more about this, check out the post at the official forums. While on the official site, you may as well get your free copy of the game from there, and if you feel compelled to donate to the project, you can do that from the official site as well.